Greetings fellow Watford fans, Omar here and it's time for the Yuan's Monday focus on Watford versus Reading tomorrow night at the Vic. Watford coming off their defeat against Coventry the other day, looking to bounce back from it and hoping that they will be able to. I think they will, but Reading will not be an easy task. Reading have been in free fall of late. They've lost five of their last seven championship matches, but they do have players who are very dangerous indeed and are rugged and physical. And the manager for Reading, Paul Enns, of course, a former footballer in his own right, knows um, that this is a game that his team will be up for, despite the fact that they have struggled of late. Reading, a team who can be rather up and down, they came off their 2-1 home defeat on Friday night against Preston. But they are a team who on the road can cause problems. And Watford will have to be ready, willing, and able to deal with that challenge. I think Watford do have enough, even without injured players, to give Reading a very solid game. Reading, of course, coming in with the players, the likes of Junior Hoylett, the veteran. Also, Andy Carroll has joined them recently on a limited uh, contract. Of course, he played for Newcastle and Liverpool in his career, amongst other teams, West Ham included. And Carroll um, is putting himself about as one of the two strikers that usually play up top for Reading in a 3-1-4-2. There's also the likes of Jeff Hendrick, a former Burnley player. We're very familiar with him. He was also at Newcastle as of late as well. And so they do have players who can hurt you. Tom Ince, the son of the manager, Paul Ince, is another player who is very dangerous. So Watford have got their hands full here. And even though Watford will have a lighter squad because two of its members are missing due to a yellow card accumulation, both of those would be Camera and Sierra Alta. I think Watford are going to play a lot better and be a bit more clinical than they were in the game against Coventry the other day. Watford will, I hope, get back players who have been injured. Certainly, you will expect to see Keenan Davis again as he played on Saturday. And you will see others, I think, in the lineup as well. Who knows? We might see Craig Cathcart in that back line since Sierra Alta will be gone from it. And Camera will also be gone. So I expect that you'll have Mario Gaspar starting, um, or maybe not. you probably have Gosling starting, or you might use some combination of the two of them. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, they're both playing on the right side, so you wouldn't use a combination of them. But you certainly have one of those two starting, and then for me, I'd have Dan Gosling starting on the right side. Who knows? We may even have James Morris come in to start on the left. It's very difficult to say. You might have Matty Pollock come in somewhere as well, but I think that you've probably got to go if Cathcart is... Healthy, you have to go with Cathcart at this stage and William Truster Kong as well. I think that's probably going to be your central pairing. They both did well together in the game against Luton at the Vic several weeks ago. And so I think that's probably going to be what Slavin Bilic goes with tomorrow. But again, we will see. It's all subject to what the injury situation is. And it probably will end up be, you know, you might even have, who knows? I mean, this is just hard to pick and figure what's going to happen um, where as far as that back line goes. But now that camera is going to be missing this game, it might be James Morris. Who knows? But I expect the formation will probably stay the same with Espria, uh somehow either being on the bench or starting. That's um, something that we'll find out, of course, tomorrow. But Watford here tomorrow are going to not only have to start brightly as they did on Saturday against Coventry, they are also going to have to be clinical take these opportunities because even at home you only get so many of these chances and Watford have to start taking them the way they did against Norwich City and the way they did against Luton you have to take these chances early and make sure you put the ball into the back of the net and of course as we know in football putting the ball in the back of the net is the hardest thing to do Watford had plenty of opportunities on Saturday to do so but the just the rubber, the green just wasn't coming to them. And the poor decision making really hurt them throughout this match, especially in the second half. So once Watford rectify the poor decision making and start to make better decisions on the ball and stop hesitating when you have a chance to take a shot and also being more clinical with your end product. Once Watford get those things down and corrected, I think that they will be uh, much more of a lively and a physical threat and a potent force in front of goal, but they've got to execute those things. If Watford execute the fundamentals, better passing, better ball movement, better finishing, 
better decision making in the final third. I think they will be able to get past Reading, but it will be a tough game. It will be a physical game. And Reading do have a, a good bench to choose from. And I think they do have some very formidable players in their attacking front line. But Watford, I think, if they play the game that they are capable of playing, if they move the ball a lot quicker, I think should be able to edge Reading in this very important match at the Vic. This has been the Yawns Monday Focus. <laughs>